What is going on ladies and gentlemen? My name is Kevin Jackwitz. This is the Cage Review. You can't see me for a second because I'm going to show you exactly how I do these drawings. If you look up, I have the picture of Sasha Banks on my laptop. I kind of enhance that, blow it up a little bit so I can get the detail. And that's how I get everything done. So I'm looking at that laptop with the picture on it. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down so it doesn't move. I know it's a little shaky there for a second. So I'm going to come here, and since I showed you that, I'm going to go ahead and show you today how to do a woman's hair. Uh, hair, honestly, for a woman, I personally find a lot easier than a man's. It's the same basic concept, but for some reason I just find this easier to work with. So with a woman's hair, especially if it's straightened, you just have a lot of straight lines. And in areas like this, you literally just kind of flick lines and it's a little bit darker here. So I'm just adding a little bit of shade. A little bit right through here. And as you can see, I've already done like a lot of the lines for the hair here. I'm gonna have to come back through and uh, do some more shading here showing the light reflection. I'm going to spin it this way because on the picture right here like literally all the way around their head it's just heavy lines uh, in the background. And the reason it is is because the middle has a lot of light reflection. This big part right here is nothing but reflection from light and it kind of carries up over here. So you go much lighter right there. So I will have to darken some of this too, like um, for an example. I've already got a bunch of straight lines and that's literally all you do is you just flick some straight lines. Well you do the exact same thing to darken it too. Like just under her um, sunglasses here, there's shadow. So you draw some shadow, get some dark lining here, but that shadow falls right into some shadow in the hair where the hair kind of like falls over itself. And so you literally have just some dark lines that you throw in. And that kind of, you can do the same thing if she has streaks. That makes the streaks pop out really well. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to do that, but I want to fill in the rest of this hair. And that way you guys can see what I do. Because really, that's the big part of this puzzle. Is getting the hair formatted right first. Making it look right. Which honestly is not that hard. Again, it's just a lot of straight lines. So, what we're going to do, is you have hair that immediately starts coming out from right here. And this hair kind of comes down almost straight down. And you have to figure out which direction the hair is going and literally just follow that little path. But you have to be careful because there are strands that are going to show up. Like very specific strands. And you show them up by making dark lines. and then you fill it in and then you continue on moving the hair down and that's what I'm saying I think that drawing a woman's head of hair personally is just a lot easier because typically it's longer 
And I think that the spikiness of a man's hair makes it a little bit more difficult to have any kind of pattern to it. It's just everywhere. I've actually drawn a self-portrait and ran into that same problem. You know, I had spiky hair and it was just kind of everywhere. And so you just want to follow the curves that you have. And then you look at the picture and you try to establish where the curve is in the hair. Because sometimes it gets a little crazy. And then before you forget where those curves are, you accentuate it with that dark line. And sometimes that line will actually get very, very dark. Sometimes when you're looking at hair, there are very deep shadows to it. So I want this hair to start filing in right about here, uh, right at the crest of her breast. It's actually pushing the hair into a smaller bunch and it all kind of curves right over that um, raised area. And so you want to draw the hair kind of from a wider perspective like filing it down. Because this, this hair is going to be coming down and you want it to all match up right here. And so I don't know exactly where I'm going to take these two strands right here yet. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw this and I can draw those strands right over top with no problem. Especially if I'm not drawing that in too dark yet. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is this is all pretty much one direction. Now there's going to be a little few squiggly hairs here and there. But I can, for the most part, take this hair from this section right here and literally just go all the same direction with it and then I'll file in um, any light reflection with the eraser and I'll highlight any shadows by getting some you know dark lines in there but for this part just to fill in really quickly okay and so you can see how her hair is lining up now. But we have an issue. It's still very solid, it's very uniform. There's no life to it yet. And that's where the dark lines come in. So right here, there's a, a, a big uh, clump of hair and it kind of comes down with the rest of it, but it's also shaded a little bit. So you want to draw the shadow in. And that'll make it pop, give it life, make it look like it's actually coming out at you. And you're going to draw this whole strand up until it fades away. And you'll have to do that with several strands, but that's how you start to give it that layered look. I need to bring my screen up just a little bit so I can see the bottom parts. Now the bottom actually gets very, very light because you have sun or light shining through. So you want to do the same thing, bring it all down, and uh, down here it's definitely very straight. Uh, if you look at the picture, you can see that the hair coming down is very, very straight. Which is good for me. As an artist, wanting to draw the hair, wanting to draw it correctly, it makes it a lot easier. 
So you're going to have a little bit of bounce here where it starts to separate again. Don't be afraid to have some loose ends and um, some strands just going everywhere because hair is going to do that. And I don't necessarily try to get hair to be exact in a situation like this because hair is not going to be exact. Hair is loose, it's wild, it does whatever it wants to even when you try to manage it and make it all uniform and shapely, it still just goes everywhere. It's um, it's a hot mess, it really is. And so the hair, as you go down, starts to separate. It gets lighter and lighter, and if I'm going too dark here, I just hit it with an eraser. Um, I have these professional rubber erasers. If you haven't gotten these before, these are miracles for artwork. Uh, when you're working with graphite and lead rubber erasers, you can actually mash them up and the lead disappears into the eraser and you can use it all over again. Absolutely amazing tool. So, um, you have a couple of strands here that kind of come out. And then you have a few strands here that kind of clump up. Now these are the clump strands. When I say strands, I don't mean single strands. Um, you do want to draw in a bunch of single strands, but you get a few clumps that you really want to make sure you have in there. So you essentially draw that in, and I'm going to bring these down, give it a little bit of shape, and you're going to have a pretty big clump right here. And I'm kind of drawing it almost the reverse way of what it should be because if I was doing a background, I would actually just shade in the background of this and leave this white. Leave the actual hair strands white so that it looked like there was a lot of shine. Unfortunately, since I'm not drawing a background, it wouldn't show up like that. So you actually have to draw the hair in. So it depends on what you're doing, uh, what style you're drawing. If you were going for the actual background, you would want to do that. So again, you're just gonna bring all these strands down. You have a really big strand right here and a really big strand right here, clump that is, I should say. And so you're getting to a place right about here where the hair really starts to separate. Like you have the initial hair comes down and then these strands right here are actually very sporadic and then they're not as full and thick. And so you want to Drawing some, it, it's sometimes tough because you have to have a very light touch and a very fine pencil tip to get a lot of just strands going everywhere. Like you got one strand that for some reason is just like caught right here and it's, it's caught on another hair right here. But it can look a lot thicker than it should. And so you have to be careful with that. Like here. You got a couple of strands just trying to snake away. And here you have to like very, very lightly throw in some just whatevers, some flyaways, we call them, depending on where you're from, I guess. 
So you just want to draw in a bunch of flyaways because you're going to have those in anybody's hair at any given time. And I don't really see too many flyaways over here to be honest. And then you bring the shade of her body down right there. And this is actually supposed to fade in a lot quicker than it does. So I'm going to have to correct that little bit there. And then right about here you get like a little bit of shade and not much like this one isn't too dark and just get like a little bit of dark penetration right there uh, a little bit right here and then Coming down off the dark one I made up right here, this is going to follow all the way down almost to the one I just made. And then this, instead of, it's going to fade away into just like a dark shade. It's not really a line, it's just darker. So you draw that in. And you can see where it makes the line. Now there's, um, looks like another bunch of strands right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to curve this. And we are going to try to establish some lines here. Now these lines stop right there. And then there's another piece that kind of flows through and they come back on the other side. And we actually get a little bit of shade in here. You also get a bit of shade underneath the hair here where it kind of shadows the body a little bit. And then you just continue layering it out. After this, there's another big chunk right, right about here. And this is one of those chunks that again, it just turns into shadow. It doesn't really have a distinct line. And 
then you just kind of give it some, some dark lines in here. And I like to always throw in some dark lines coming out of it too. Because it's going to make it look a little bit more real. And then, in the middle, you're just going to kind of add what would naturally be the lines that would be shadow. Because one thing about hair is there is light and dark all the way through your hair. You're going to naturally have shadows everywhere. And just keep those working their way down. And make sure you stay away from the edges and don't do anything to those because this is going to darken the hair up and remember the edges are supposed to be lighter so you kind of follow through and you just keep going with that So we're going to come back up here, there is a little bit of hair that comes down this way and that's going to create this little shadow right here. And I'm actually going to flick that one out so that instead of just a shadow, it, it's hair shadow. And then on this side, it's going to be a little bit darker. And that's going to be a few hairs right here. So you kind of get the idea of where I'm going with the layering thing. Right here next to her hand, you're going to have a clump of hair that's bunched up and you're actually going to have quite a dark line right here that almost matches the line of her palm a little bit. And so I'm going to give it that dark line. I'm going to shade around it so it looks like there's actually something being bunched up there a little bit. And same thing, I'm just going to give it some flicks away from it so that it kind of establishes that look. One of the biggest places that she's going to have heavy shadows is at the crown where this meets the hair that's coming down. All of that is shadow. So all of this right here is kind of a heavy line. And you want to have the heavy line that's meeting right here too. All of this is dark. And it's tough because sometimes you have really, really dark spots with like a few hairs. And so how you do that is you draw, here let me actually draw it out first because I don't want to get this too carried away here. You 
you actually draw the hair that you're going to keep. Like if I got a big strand or clump here, I want to make sure that's highlighted on both sides very, very well. And I mean very well. So don't be afraid to go dark because you're going to go dark. And so what happens is, now that I've got all this here, I've got to draw all this shadow. And as you can see, I am drawing hairs inside that. Now this is pretty much dark right here, looking at her head. Um, and I think I got like one more hair right here. It comes down, it's pretty thin. And then what you need to do is essentially what I just did on the smaller spots where it looked like there was some shadow there and I needed to make it spread out. You do the exact same thing here. You get into the hair and you flick down from here and it'll give you that look of shadow. And you can get as dark as you want in some of these areas because it is very heavy shadow. And then you have this. And you just keep flicking until it blends and you can see how it's starting to. And you want to keep that uh, slowly coming down and lightening up. And it is a slow gradual fade there so you got to take your time with it. Don't be afraid to go a little too far. You know, let that shade really show up. And I'm sure everybody has their own techniques for it, but uh, this is what I taught myself, so. And then this, same thing, is kind of a little bit darker. And these are all going to be darker strands because when you pull this in, all this shadow it's gonna naturally darken this area, which is good because it is actually darker. Like if you look at the picture, this little strand right here is actually quite a bit darker than the rest of her hair. So again, don't be afraid to go a little bit too dark. Then you bring this down. You want to highlight that really darkly. And this, you actually want to bring that in a little bit. So to bring that in, we're just going to shade. And 
as you can see, I'm very big on shading um, around these dark areas. It really brings it to life. And on this side, um, since I've already done this and kind of dropped this hair down, this is going to go from really, really dark to pretty light. And so we want to bring this down, make it nice and dark. Have all of this filled in. But then on the outside, there's a lot of, again, wisps. And these wisps you need to accentuate. You need to, you know, let people know they're there. Um, she's got several. So you just draw in some lines there. And there you go. It kind of builds that really dark to really light aspect of her hair. And you would do the same thing up top. Uh, she does have wisps up top. And these are really light. Uh, some of them are just, you know, they're kind of all over. And you can tell that she straightens her hair because uh, she does have some natural curl to it, which does really, really uh, get accentuated in something like this. So just throw in a few wisps and that should do fine. And you got a few strays over here. Actually got a couple lined up perfectly right here. And that's the, the basics for a generic hairstyle uh, for virtually any type of person. Um, it does get a little bit more complicated, the, you know, the more layered the hair is. I did a portrait of a um, girl from Titanic, Kate Winslet. And her hair is very layered. And uh, if you take a look at that one, it was actually quite a challenge. Because it was layered like nothing I'd ever done before. And it took me a while. Um, but I've learned to start out by drawing just that base hair that you saw where it was kind of bland and there was no real movement to it. And it just, it's easier to layer when you have that base. You know, when you've got that foundation to work on, it makes everything else much, much easier. Um, just like this, you know, I, I've got this solid color and then I go back and I get in all the dark areas. And at the very end, I'll take an eraser and I'll put in some shine uh, where there is shine. And so it's not just drawing the lines, it's drawing the depth. And the depth can be tricky. So this is not as light as it looks like right here, so I'm going to darken it up a little bit. Not too much, hopefully. And then this is even darker yet. And then you start to see how her hair shapes up. And it does take some doing. Don't get it twisted. I mean, this is not something you're going to perfect overnight. Uh, for me, not having any art lessons, I can only show you how I do it. And it did take me a while to figure it out, to try to get it to look right. That's just trial and error of artwork, though. You have to be willing to try something. If it doesn't work, you have to try something else. Just kind of the way art goes. Now this 
is just a very small area right here. So I'm going to do the same thing and give it a little shape around it. Coming off of the shades, there's actually a pretty big um, piece that comes out right about here and starts to really get dark just underneath the, um, the stem of the glasses she has on. And it comes down a little bit and um, Okay, and that's all there really is to hair. Get your baseline, figure out where your hair is going to curve, and what kind of motion that's going to create. Uh, for example, you have this hair here, you got this big curve, and if you look, there's a very slight um, angle meeting of two strands of hair and so like starts let's say right here and this bends way out and then this almost goes straight down and then this feeds in keeps coming down that's where you get your little dark spot there and this you don't really see it all the way down you really don't And then of course, I do the flick and kind of stress the area that I just drew every time. Because there's no such thing as a line that's not layered with the hair. strand here and I actually need to draw around this one a little better because this is a pretty small strand so this needs to come like all the way up here and really cut that in And so that kind of gives you the idea of hair. Um, I've been spending a lot of time on this belt because it is ridiculous. <laughs> I've spent hours just on the belt, just trying to get that belt right because there's so many small intricate parts to it. And what I can do real quick, just to kind of give you the idea, is I'll, I'll do the hands and the hands I extend my lead out because it, they, these actually show up pretty light her fingers do so again there's no spot that is not drawn because skin is never actually white even on a white person quote unquote um, there's no such thing as an actual white spot now there's light reflection that can be white 
but a person's skin will never have any genuine white on it. So therefore you have to fill in the entire blank canvas here. You can definitely do it lightly. You want to start lightly. And Sasha is slightly, and I mean slightly darker skin. She's actually pretty light skin tone still. But if you're comparing her to the vast majority of white people, she's slightly darker. Of course, I don't know that she's white at all. I don't know. I think she's mixed with Latin and um, black, actually, but I'm not positive on that. And if you guys are wondering why I chose Sasha Banks uh, and Seamus, I mean, it really came down to my choice and who is like my favorite WWE women's wrestler. Um, I think Sasha Banks is just very entertaining. Okay, now here's a trick. You have the fingers here. On that pinky finger, you see a big shadow right next to a bunch of light. That's a tricky thing to get sometimes. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit this knuckle and we're gonna draw this shadow. that shadow it's gonna come kind of all the way around this finger here right here right here we're gonna bring this shadow in a little bit and then you're gonna have a little bit of shadow kind of coming down this way that's gonna create this darker area right here. You almost get like a shadow on shadow effect. And then you want to lightly and slowly bring that into the hand so that it kind of blends. And then you want to give this a little color right here, make this a little bit lighter. And right here you've got a line. And then right here you've got a line. And I just kind of draw the lines in now. It does take some getting used to. Uh, make no mistake about it. Getting used to measuring the lines and the hands and things like that. Uh, it can be a little tricky sometimes. And then you've got this kind of dark shadow right here. And this is where you just start to blend in. You're gonna start from the bottom of the hand. It's going to be darker toward the outside. 
you got more of a shadow there. So you kind of blend in this whole big area here. And don't be afraid to make this a little bit darker here because it's, like I said, it's not exactly white. So there you go. Same thing, we're gonna have that shadow. It leaves just a little bit of a white spot. Right there. You have some dark shading out to the sides, off to the back, you got a little dark shading right here. You have to very lightly bring that together. Same thing right here. And unfortunately, sometimes I do have a very heavy touch. It's unfortunate. Um, I need to learn to lighten the grip a little bit sometimes, or the pressure. Kind of get the shadow that separates right there. And sometimes when you're drawing fingers, it really is just a tiny um, line that separates objects. Um, this is a perfect example when you're drawing fingers. There's really nothing to go by except for just a tiny line of shadow. You have to be very cognizant of that. And then you kind of, kind of, kind of have a line here. For the most part, she actually has very smooth hands, it looks like, uh, at least on the upside, the top of her hands. Sometimes you're drawing a lot more lines in the hands and the knuckles than what I see here. Sometimes it's actually full of lines. And it's kind of the same thing right here. You actually get a little bit more shadow right there. And so, that's a nice start for that hand. Um, I still need to fix this. And I'm going to obviously finish up the trunks the bra, the arm. I actually need to finish this part of the arm, which really isn't hard to do. Um, like if I was going to bring this down, it'd probably right about here. 
And it's funny because her arm is actually tucked away. It's kind of like hidden mostly behind the belt. And so you're actually just getting what would be this right here. And she has a brace on. And so that's going to show up. Um, so I'll draw that right there and then I'll finish that bracer. Which is funny because it looks so short, but if you, again, if you look at the picture and look where this lines up with the plate, it's just that her arm is kicked uh, very horizontally toward the camera. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's where I'm going to stop for now. Um, I got, you know, a lot of hair in there now, and you can see uh, kind of how I'm starting the hand. And for me, you know, it's just a matter of going over and shading until it looks right. So, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. Uh, I do enjoy doing these. I'm going to start doing smaller portraits so I can get them done quicker. Uh, I can knock out an entire portrait in a couple hours, usually. Um, these bigger ones, though, when I'm using these fine tips, obviously it takes a lot longer because this is how I'm used to doing it. And I'm teaching myself new ways to make it quicker but I gotta get there first, so this is what I'm doing. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think in the comments. My name is Kevin Jackwitz, Cage Nation, out.